T-minus 30 seconds. T-minus 10. Engine ignition. Main engine start. And we have liftoff of an carry for the NG 15 mission, the Wallace Flight Facility. Engines are at 100%. Attitude, core pressures, and vehicle subsystems are nominal. The SS Katherine Johnson takes flight on this, the 59th anniversary of John Glenn's Mercury flight, carrying 8,000 pounds of cargo to the International Space Station. Good performance on the first stage so far. Engine set 100%, all systems nominal. One continues nominal performance, engines at 100%. Good, good core pressures. Engines remain steady, added to nominal. Max Q, added to nominal. First stage passing through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket. 90 seconds into the flight. This first stage burns for a little over three minutes, three minutes, 18 seconds until main engine cutoff. About 90 seconds to stage one burnout. Attitude nominal. Engines at 100% and steady. T plus two minutes. All subsystems continue in nominal performance. All system, subsystems are nominal. Uh, we'll be ready to shift down to 80% uh, on the engines at 170. Start up slow throttle down. Throttling down at three minutes into the flight, main engine cutoff coming soon. Throttle down to 55%. Main engine cutoff. We have Miko, and Terry's entering into a coast stage. Fairing separation will occur about 30 seconds later. As we lose sight of the vehicle, now switching to animation. Some controlled firings uh, on the interstage of the rocket. Attitude nominal, good separation. Twenty seconds to stage two ignition. All subsystems nominal. Fairing separation. Interstage separation. Confirmed fairing separation and interstage. Stage two ignition. Stage two ignition confirmed. Stage two is a solid rocket motor burns for about two minutes, 44 seconds.
phage T will continue to burn for another approximately two minutes. Altitude 138 kilometers. Uh, mission time, 300 seconds, velocity 4.8 kilometers per second, altitude 150 kilometers. All systems continue to perform nominally. Good calls, 5 minutes 15 seconds into today's flight. Stage 2 motor pressure, nominal. Attitude nominal, uh, altitude is 170 kilometers, uh, roughly one minute to stage two burnout. All stage two and GNC parameters continue to be nominal. Six minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, uh, coming up on stage two burnout of that solid rocket motor. That'll initiate a two-minute coast period until uh, second stage separation. Stage two, starting to tail off. Roughly 15 seconds to burn out. Stage two burnout, attitude nominal. Stage two burnout, good attitude. Uh, we'll earn, we're in a coast period now. Cygnus did exposed after that uh, fairing separation and will continue to carry the second stage with it until about nine minutes into the flight. Attitude nominal. Uh, attitude nominal. Uh, expected uh, attitude control system thruster firings uh, received, uh, continuing on course. Roughly one minute to payload separation. Altitude 185 kilometers. Velocity 7.5 kilometers per second. All systems continue to operate as expected. Approximately 30 seconds to uh, spacecraft separation. Attitude nominal. Systems continue to perform as expected. Uh, attitude corrections uh, maintaining uh, expectations. LCGSO, I just released red team to the pad. Copy that. Spacecraft separation. Confirmed. Nine minutes into today's flight, Cygnus has separated from the second stage. LC Ace, that concludes our callouts. Copy that, Ace. Okay, uh, NG15, excellent job today. Let's go ahead and wrap up through this post launch checklist. Um, and Prop 1, uh, uh, can you report on status of uh, pulse purging? Uh, pulse purging has just started.
Copy that. We'll check 430. And uh, GNC 1 LC, uh, when you have uh, the uh, Antares state factor to uh, the Cygnus POC emailed and confirmed, uh, give me a call back on step 431. Copy and work. From the Wallops Range Control Center in Wallops Island, Virginia, some celebratory fist bumps as they successfully delivered Cygnus into orbit, a nine-minute flight on top of Antares from Virginia Space's uh, Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport uh, into orbit, uh, Cygnus now flying free. The SS Katherine Johnson in-flight will make its uh, one-and-a-half-day uh, journey, uh, just a little shy of two days, uh, to the International Space Station, arriving in the wee hours uh, early morning on Monday, February 22nd. Arm enable rotated, arm enable indication no longer illuminated. Copy that, Ops 1. Uh, and Ops 1, disable your local launch enable button. Ops 1, launch enable removed. Uh, flight controllers in Dulles, uh, Virginia, north of Grumman's Mission Operations Center, will take control of uh, the Cygnus and uh, monitor its approach to the International Space Station over the next couple of days. Uh, solar array deployment coming in a couple of hours will uh, be breaking before that, and we'll provide uh, confirmation of that via our blog and social media. Before we depart with you today for our coverage of the launch of Northrop Grumman's CRS-15 mission to the International Space Station. We're bringing on uh, Deputy Manager of the International Space Station Program, Kenny Todd, on with us uh, to provide some remarks. Kenny, thank you for joining us today. Hey, Gary. Good, uh, good morning. It's uh, good to be with you. Kenny, this launch comes ahead of a crew rotation and, of course, in the nearer term, some EVAs. From the perspective of the International Space Station Program, what is the significance of this mission, uh, CRS-15? Well, uh, Gary, I mean, this uh, this particular mission uh, um, has um, about 8,000 pounds of, of cargo coming to, to the space station, and, um, uh, you know, roughly a third of it is going to be dedicated uh, directly to utilize, utilization and, and science on board on board the station, and so again, that's our that's our bread and butter. That's that's what we're up there to do is is uh, really really uh, do the utilization and science that uh, that our our commercial uh, customers need, uh, the things that we need to learn in order to uh, go uh, further into our solar system, our human research, and so we've uh, we've got a lot of this flight that's dedicated uh, to to that kind of activity. Uh, in addition to that, we've uh, we've got uh, a little over a third of it that's uh, dedicated just to, to basic vehicle systems maintenance hardware and some new some new technology that we're bringing on board. So, again, uh, as we as we look to go further further away uh, from low Earth orbit, um, the thing that we have to do is continue to learn, um, you know, about the systems that we're going to need, and and uh, the ISS provides a, a great platform for that. So we are launching some some new hardware in the vehicle systems area that allow us to to uh, demonstrate some of this technology and ensure that it'll be be there for us when we need it uh, in the future. Um, but then, as always, um, these Cygnus flights are very important to us because they bring up a lot of crew supplies as well. Um, they are a workhorse when it comes to to uh, to making sure that we keep our crews sustained on orbit with, uh, with the different consumables that they need. So, again, a very important flight for us, and we're glad to see it off the ground and, and on the way to station. Off the ground and on the way to station on time, Kenny. This is coming uh, right on the heels of Texas having some severe winter weather. Now, how were International Space Station operations uh, continuously supported during those rolling blackouts across the state? Well, uh, you know, there's kind of two facets of that, Gary. Uh, there's the uh, facilities. You know, uh, the facilities themselves are, are um, from a, a power standpoint, we're fairly redundant. We have generators here on site in MCC. But, you know, we also have control centers around the world, Gary, that, that we can uh, leverage into whenever any any one of us has a particular issue going on um, at their at their site. And so uh, when you have a program uh, like the space station that's been around 20-plus years, um, I, I don't want to say I don't want to say we've seen it all, but we most definitely um, have uh, had our challenges through the years when it comes to supporting. So, so one facet is the facilities, and we're in really good shape there. The other facet is just our people um, and making sure that um, you know we have the, the the people available to come in and and uh, and work and make sure that we're keeping an eye on on our uh, our friends and colleagues up in low earth orbit and and uh, and having their back and and I, I think the team has done a really nice job here again because we've we're we're very well practiced living here on the gulf coast we're 
pretty well practiced at uh, contingency operations and and uh, knowing how to uh, staff the facilities and and make sure at the same time that we're taking care of our people and their families. Hey, that's right. And the crew is going to be expecting uh, all this uh, 8,000 pounds of cargo here in the next couple of days. Tell us what's ahead for uh, once Cygnus arrives uh, in terms of capture, cargo operations, and some of the science on board. Sure. Um, you know, we... Uh, we talk a lot of times around here in terms of dominoes, and and uh, we have a lot of dominoes stacked up right now. When you look into into February and the and the early early part of March, um, getting getting the vehicle to station, getting the Cygnus there is is that first domino, and and with that, um, we'll get the hatch open here. Um, on the day that it arrives, um, we've got some some key science objectives that we want to get going in that first couple of days. Um, so so the first two or three days uh, after it gets there, we'll we'll be heavily and, and intensely focused on on the science that we need to get up and running. Um, then uh, shortly after that, merely uh, you know four or five days after that, we'll be heavy into doing a set of EVA preps. Uh, we're uh, at this point planning on on going out to do an EVA in the in the um, you know possibly as early as, as next weekend. Uh, we uh, we've got a double double EVA planned, um, and so uh, we'll we'll get busy on that as quick as we get the Cygnus uh, uh, get the science up and going that came up in Cygnus, and then we'll we'll be on on to to doing EVAs. A lot coming up here in the n- near term. Kenny Todd, thank you so much for uh, joining us here at the uh, end of our launch coverage. Thanks for having me, Gary. I appreciate it. Again, we had a successful launch of uh, Northrop Grumman's CRS-15 mission on time today, 12.36 and 49 seconds p.m. Eastern Time. You're getting a live look at the Mission Operations Center in Dulles, Virginia. Northrop Grumman flight controller is taking control of the vehicle and will monitor its approach to the International Space Station over the next uh, near two days until it arrives uh, in the early morning of February 22nd, uh, Monday morning. Uh, robotic operators Suichi Noguchi and... Uh, Mike Hopkins aboard the International Space Station will be poised at the controls of 